Ah, uh, Windows, the OS that just seems to invite controversy after controversy. From wholesale ripping off GUI components from its competitors, to locking you out of your own machine if you don't have a Microsoft account, to Windows 8's horrible hybrid desktop tablet paradigm, all of it coming to a head with Windows 10 invading way too much of the user's privacy. Let's go over some of Windows' biggest update controversies and then compare them with Linux and how Linux vendors dealt with similar problems. First, Windows updates deleting user files. Files. So back in February of 2020, Microsoft released an update, KB4532693. Nice. That ended up switching the user account to a temporary one, but the update never reverted back to the original profile. As a result, their taskbars and start menus were reset to factory defaults, and their desktop files were no longer present. Though the update had just supposedly moved the files from uh, the accounts folder, some people reported that the update actually did delete their files for good. The only way to get files back was by uninstalling the update, or by creating a new uh, local user account and transferring the the old files to the new account, but some people did report that the update actually did delete all of their user files. Microsoft further had the audacity to not recall the update, nor did they even put it in their known issues section on their website. And this isn't the first time. A year and a half prior to this update, there was another one that actually did delete user files. Documents and folders containing tens of thousands of pictures were inadvertently deleted after Windows 10's October 2018 update. Microsoft actually did pull the curtain on this update and later explained why it was deleting files. Windows automatically deleted empty copies of folders, but in doing so, it would also delete folders that had contents inside. Now compare all of this with Ubuntu, which quickly removed an update for their OS that had a handful of users encounter a similar issue. The devs discouraged anyone who had Ubuntu 20.10 on their system from updating to 2004. In fact, 20.10 users never even got an upgrade notification. This is because Shim, a piece of software, could potentially brick a computer due to Shim not being being compatible with a rare version of EFI. So unlike Microsoft, Canonical actually warned their users ahead of time before the upgrade ever hit their system and made sure that people were aware of any severe issues. Huh. Funny how that works. <laughs> TPM requirements for Windows 11. The first controversial change Windows 11 brought was the fact that user hardware needed to have Trusted Platform Module 2 available. According to Wikipedia, TPM is a, quote, internal standard for a secure crypto processor, a dedicated microprocessor designed to secure hardware through integrated cryptographic keys. It's used for digital rights management, or DRM, Windows Defender, Windows Domain Login, protection and enforcement of software licenses, and prevention of cheating in games online. Now, TPM was introduced by Trusted Computing Group. Uh, version 1.2 was finalized in March of 2011. Three years later, version 2.0 was announced, but it hadn't been published until November of 2019. Now, the catch is that only the newest generations of CPUs support this specific version of TPM. In fact, I have a Ryzen 1800 in my uh, computer, which I bought in 2019, and it doesn't have a TPM version 2 module. I believe the oldest Ryzen CPU you can get that supports uh, TPM version 2 is the 3000 series. It's crazy. Since Microsoft has a bully pulpit when it comes to the land of desktop computing, those with older hardware are not able to upgrade to Windows 11. The funny thing is, even though TPM supposedly helps to increase the security of Windows 11, Microsoft collects so much data about the user that the only way your data isn't secure is from Microsoft themselves. They've made themselves into the root authority of what's secure and who has access. And not surprisingly, they have unfettered access. Now, in contrast, Linux does not require TPM at all. You can have hardware old as well as new, and Linux even supports ARM platforms such as the Raspberry Pi. If your processor doesn't support TPM, you can enable it in your system after selecting the appropriate options in the BIOS and installing the tools. After enabling, you can do such things as develop secure applications with an open source software stack such as GoTPM, use Trusted Grub, use Microsoft BitLocker, use encrypted email with Thunderbird, and enable TPM related features for web browsers. General updates to Windows 11. Now, it seems that an update for Windows is either fixing a problem or creating another. Take the update for August 2021, for example. One Reddit user reported after this update, the games I play no longer work because when they start, Windows minimizes them. I seem to be running them in the taskbar, but if I click on it or Alt-Tab to switch to them, they briefly go full screen, but then drop back to minimize after a second or two. 
The same update apparently caused some alt tab issues as well. Here's what another Reddit user had to say. If I alt tab from a game here, Witcher 3, and then try to resume it, it just flickers and then automatically tabs out of the game. It pretty much prevents me from going back to the game if I alt tab out of it from full screen. Furthermore, Win 10 under this update sometimes alt tabs out of the full screen game immediately after starting the game from Steam. Basically, the full screen game now starts up minimized on my taskbar. If I try to click the game to go in uh, to its full screen mode, Windows 10 immediately alt tabs back to the full screen, and now I'm at square one. Getting rid of these issues is as simple as uninstalling the updates, but with uninstalling the updates comes increased security risks. Exemplifying the August update mentioned earlier, uninstalling this will allow attackers to exploit the Windows print spool service. So when you're on Windows, you really have to pick your poison. Either keep the OS up to date, but face a trade-off in other areas, or don't update to not have to deal with these annoying issues, but then leave your PC vulnerable. So it really looks like Windows 11 is shaping up to have all of the same controversies and malfunctions as Windows 10, but at a whole new level. So what about Linux? Well, when was the last time a user ever had to uninstall an update to Linux to avoid problems? Even if they are using a rolling release distro, something like Arch, bleeding edge software almost never causes an issue like this. At least I've never experienced it and neither has my writer. There was at least one case earlier this year where the first release candidate of kernel 5.12 caused issues for those who have swap files on their system. So much so that Linus himself warned people not to use it. But that was a release candidate and kernel issues like that are rare. Besides, most distros are only ever going to get stable kernel releases and not any release candidate version. Windows updates keep breaking network printing. At least three times in 2021, Microsoft issued patches that broke network printers for hundreds of thousands of users and businesses alike. Let's start with March. KB5802 seemed to create a blue screen of death when attempting to print a page. The solution? It's the typical uninstallation of the update, but face security risks that might have been patched by the update. Fast forward to September. Updates KB500-5565 and KB500-5566 caused the same issue, but at least the BSODs didn't appear this time. Less than a month later, Windows administrators are venting their frustrations yet again. And what's worse, Microsoft hasn't seemed to offer any official news on what they can do about this. People have had to rely on the suggestion of non-Windows developers, which in turn creates even more problems for some users. Bleeping Computer offers a few different ways to eliminate the problem, but cause others, including, you guessed it, uninstalling the updates or replacing a certain DLL file from the system's uh, System32 directory. Now we get it. Network printing needs Needs to get patched from being potentially exploited, but the end result has caused much frustration for everyone else. I tried looking up Linux update breaks printing, but I couldn't find any results. So in other words, never has there been an update from either the kernel or a specific distro that has broken network printing. Now, never say never, but it doesn't seem like there's any documented issues with uh, a Linux kernel or a specific distro upgrade that is broken network printing. Linux administrators don't have to worry about their company's printers not working so long as the computer can send that print job to Linux. And just about everyone that I've talked to who has gone from Windows to Linux has noticed just how much simpler printing is on Linux. Now, Linux isn't perfect, and Linux is not immune from attacks or exploits. For example, earlier this year, it was discovered that the kernel had a Wi-Fi problem. It did not, quote, properly clear received fragments from memory in some situations. This could allow attacker to inject packets or expose sensitive information. This was all fixed in Ubuntu 2104. Another example is a long-time bug that's been around since 2005, at least. The exploitation of the Datagram uh, Congestion Control Protocol, or DCCP, this could allow a local user to gain root privileges and allow the execution of arbitrary code in the kernel. And this wasn't discovered until 2017. Now, updates rarely cause problems, though. When the kernel gets patched, it generally doesn't leave any unintended side effects. So, Windows or Linux? Now, if you're frustrated with Windows 11, you should give Linux a try. Linux is less prone to malware, and if there is a loophole open, the loophole usually gets patched immediately, leaving no side effects afterwards. No forced updates, no automatic shutdowns, no advertisements pushing you to use Microsoft Edge, no alt-tabbing user issues, no need to have TPM-enabled CPUs. And gaming is only getting better on Linux, thanks to Proton and Valve. And while some people might need to dual boot because of software that only works on Windows, other than that, I feel like this video has made a 
pretty strong case on why Windows is inferior to Linux. But I would like to know what you think. Do you think Windows is inferior to Linux? Do you think that Microsoft really has uh, gone downhill with their Windows releases? Uh, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and my YouTube members who make what I do here possible. If it wasn't for them, these videos would not be where they're at today. So thank you. If you believe in the work that I do and you want to help support this show and help it grow, you can become a patron or a YouTube member with the links down below. I think that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next one.